Here we are in 2021, and this video is long overdue. The modding community continues to push the envelope of what the Arma 3 engine can do a little bit more each passing week, and in this video I'm going to highlight 15 of some of the best realism mods available on the workshop. Do know that these are largely my own opinion and that there are an absolute shitload of incredible mods on the workshop provided by some of the best content creators in the gaming world. A couple of these have been featured before in a top list but have not been featured in a realism list. So I thought I'd give them a second nod to suggest that not only are they incredible mods in their own right, but that they will add to your immersion into this amazing game we all love so much. As always, the mod links are down in the description below. So without further ado, let's get into the volume 3 of my top 15 realism mods. At number 15 is GGE Weapon Swap by Furor and Gubin. This is super simple and doesn't need anything else to function. What it does is it replaces the default weapon swap animation to be a faster, more fluid motion where your primary weapon is dropped to your chest upon switching to your secondary weapon as you would in real life, instead of slinging it around your damn shoulder. This is perfect for the milsim folks who desire the most realistic motions possible. While I don't primarily spend my time on the ground while in Arma 3, this mod does make it a lot more fun to shoot and go on operations. I can definitely thank the mod creators for this one, as I can't count how many times I'd get smoked while waiting on my secondary weapon to come around upon switching. Swapping to your secondary is finally faster than reloading an Arma 3. At number 14 is US Uniforms Pack by Abbott. This awesome little mod adds some realistic skins to the base game uniforms for the NATO forces. Specifically, instead of just having an American flag on the uniforms, they now have US Army, US Air Force name tapes on the OCPs and woodland camos, as well as US Navy utility uniforms for carrier-based operations. The skins look really good and add to the 2035 aesthetic just a bit more by grounding them in reality. If NATO were to send a primarily US-led force, you can guarantee we'd have some name tapes on our uniforms. My favorite has to be the Pilot G suit, which is literally just a reskin of the base game flight suit made to look like you're actually wrapped in a G suit. I don't know why, but I love the look, and it's more prevalent in the Desert Deployment flight suit. Coupling this with vests and carriers from other mods will help extend its utility. The Army and Air Force OCP blends in beautifully in the base game terrains and no doubt with other modded maps. The Navy carrier uniforms look awesome and add a great sense of presence for the RP factor. This is on par with Massey's Navy uniforms, so if you're looking for some more utility uniforms to add to your collection, then this is it. At number 13 is the Rapier Field Standard C Surface to Air Missile System by RKSL Studios. RKSL has made some amazing mods in their time, focusing primarily on British and European weapons and equipment, and this addition to their workshop page is no exception. They've created the Rapier surface-to-air missile system and its accompanying radar and target acquisition system equipment. The extra equipment helps supplement the launcher's limited range, which in Arma 3 is still quite extensive. The launcher itself has a range of 8 kilometers, while the blind fire, fire control, radar mounted on a revolving turret has a range of 10 kilometers and a 60 degree cone. Finally, the dagger search radar has a 16 kilometer range and a 360 degree omnidirectional detection area, giving the rapier extreme lethality against aerial targets. While the mod is still in beta, it is being worked on by the team as they get time, but right now it has one damage model and only one LOD, or level of detail, so no matter what distance you view the assets from, they will always look their best. This mod looks very promising and will no doubt be a centerpiece of many British themed missions. At number 12 is the Arma 3 MGS Stun Grenade by Alert23. This mod is a fun little addition that adds the Metal Gear Solid stun grenade. Growing up, you're often influenced by things you see in media and gaming, and that largely places in your mind how things should look. When I was 10 and got my hands on Metal Gear Solid when it launched on the PS1, I always found it funny that the stun grenades looked exactly like smoke grenades. But what did I know? Later on, I would realize that it was just the limitation and not worth the effort of modeling its own grenade back in the days when space on a CD was at a premium. Fast forward to today, and we've got a fun little mod that brings the nostalgia back. 
The grenade works well enough, knocking enemies out or temporarily disorienting them so you can bring them down before entering a room. Sometimes it doesn't affect every enemy in the room, so be wary, but it's still a fun little addition. At number 11 is the Ambient Enemy Spawner by Fox7. This is his first workshop edition, and it's fire. Once downloaded, all you need to do is spawn the module into the mission editor and customize the parameters of the enemies you'd like to spawn in-game. This will greatly help mission creators that are on a time crunch that don't necessarily want to place every single asset in the game world by hand, as that can greatly affect performance for all players on mission start. Instead, you can designate areas the enemy will spawn within the module's parameters, what type of enemy will spawn, how many and how frequently, as well as designated safe zones where the enemy will not spawn using triggers on the map. This is perfect for small groups of players that usually have a Zeus running, but this allows the Zeus to get into the action as well. And as it is randomly generated, will help keep it fresh and random with almost no missions ever playing out the same way. At number 10 is Plane Turbulence by Seb. Seb has gifted us with another one of those little quality of life mods that you didn't realize you were missing. This mod adds turbulence to your aircraft when in flight. Even with the base game's wind turned all the way up, you largely wouldn't notice while in flight unless using the advanced flight model in helicopters. Now, you can experience actual random and sporadic turbulence while in flight that may not necessarily affect you that much while at altitude, but when taking off and landing, you'll start to think twice before slacking off on your approach. When flying, taking off and landing are the most dangerous operations you can conduct, and turbulence is a real thing. Using the in-game add-on settings, you can customize how weak or how powerful the turbulence is. This is fantastic. It gives me a little anxiety every time I'm coming in to land during a storm. After almost 3,000 hours in Arma, not much scares you anymore, but the unpredictability of mods like this definitely brings back a little bit of that fear. At number 9 is a very recent addition, Green Mag by Cosa Dola. This awesome mod allows for the repacking of magazines. While this mod works with Ace, if they are both running at the same time, it will deactivate Ace's magazine repack feature and take precedence. The way it works is, your empty mags collect in your inventory upon reload, after which you are able to repack the magazines. Extra rounds are available in packages ranging from 10 to 60 bullets, which can be unpacked using Ace or manually while in the inventory. These are acquired through the miscellaneous section of the arsenal. A simple and advanced option exists in the add-on options, by which the simple version doesn't care what type of bullet you try to pack as long as it's the correct size and length, while the advanced version cares about the caliber and type of round you're packing. This is a great little mod that adds to longevity of ground operations and further dives into the immersion, as not all the ammunition is sitting neatly in magazines during wartime. As with any new mod, be patient with the developers while they get it working with different weapons mods and iron out all the kinks. Green Mag is already working pretty well though. At number 8 is the Hemet Anti-Air by a Humble Baker. This simple mod adds a Hemet mobile anti-air weapon system to the NATO faction, which is simply a Praetorian Sea Wisp stuck to the back of a Hemet. This is one of the first compositions I've featured on any of my lists since compositions were open to publication on the Steam Workshop with the Arma 3 2.0 launch last year. Using the Attach 2 script, the gun system will stay on the back of the Hemet no matter how crazy the driver is, allowing for a secondary mobile anti-aircraft system for the NATO forces that is a little bit more grounded in reality over the IFV-6A Cheetah weapon system. This mod is perfect for base defense and austere locations such as FOB and forward air bases. During air raids at night, the Hemet anti-air system will light up the sky with tracers and it's a sight to behold. At number 7 is KKA3 Injured Animations by Cola. This awesome mod introduces injury reaction animations when AI or a player is shot. These actions can be turned off in the add-on options if desired. What it adds is a hit marker specific injury reaction based on where on the body an asset is shot. If shot in the arm, they will hold their arm and flinch as such. If shot in the torso, they will sometimes limp and run away from the fight. This adds a huge amount of immersion to your gameplay if you're tired of shooting dudes square in the chest and watching them one shot you right back. 
Of course, like any mod, it will not function perfectly all the time. If using a smaller caliber like pistols, you may have to hit them twice for the injury reaction to register and for the mod to kick in. It's pretty awesome when it does though. And while getting footage for other mods, I forgot I had this loaded and was wondering why the enemy was running away after getting lit up in a firefight. This is a pretty awesome addition for emergence sake. At number 6 is CQB Weapon Stance by Devastator and the KY the Team TR. This sweet little mod adds tactical readiness stances for special forces operators and ground forces alike. While stacked up at a door, it's not exactly advised to have your weapon pointed directly at your buddy's back. Instead, the high ready and low ready positions are taken to minimize the space in between breaching operators and maximizing the lethality of the breach. By using the T key and shift T by default, you can take the high ready or low ready respectively. For your sidearm, control T will work as a low ready stance. The controls can be adjusted to fit your liking in the add-on control setting. The mod utilizes a randomization feature to allow for multiple types of low and high ready animations to increase the immersion. As such, each stance will look slightly different when executed. At number 5 is Tier 1 Weapons by Fingolfin A3. There are a ton of beautifully rendered and textured weapon mods out there, but it's always the mods that feature only a few weapons that get the most love and attention from their developers. These weapons are beautiful, adding some awesome weapons utilized by special forces operators around the globe. Included are the awesome SR-16 Assault Rifle, the M110 Designated Marksman Rifle, the HK416 Carbine, as well as Glocks 19 and 22, and the 6 hour P320 service pistol in use by the US Army. These are some of the most beautiful weapons available, on par with Nia Arms weapons, and a definite labor of love on behalf of the content creator. You can always tell when creators love what they do, and it's mod like this that let you know the community is full of people dedicated to immersion and realism of gameplay. This beauty comes at a cost of a 2.3 gigabyte download, but I can tell you firsthand that it's totally worth it. At number 4 is Lowlands Warriors PIP View Distance by Lowlands Warriors Team. This mod is something that so many people are searching for but don't know where to find it. You'll have to take yourself to Armaholic, download and load it as a local mod, but the payment for your little bit of effort is so incredibly worth it. What this mod does is adds distances under the picture-in-picture -picture quality setting in the video options, which, once selected, extends the view of your in-cockpit picture-in-picture displays out to that distance. Do know that this is somewhat of a performance hit when placed on a super high distance, so if you want to keep those frame rates high, I'd keep the distance at about 5 kilometers or so. That is plenty of altitude when dropping laser guided bombs, but some people like to be crazy high when they drop them, so that's really up to your preference. The mod allows it to be extended up to something crazy like 20 kilometers, which is totally not necessary, but hey, you can do it if you want. Coupled with mods like TTT3's FA-18 Super Hornet and any other aircraft or vehicle that utilizes PIP viewports from inside the vehicle, this will vastly increase your level of immersion. At number 3 is another one of my favorites that I can't get over, Moe's Pilot Gear Suite by 556 Mo. I know I've showcased this mod a couple times, but man, us flyers don't get a lot of high fidelity gear and equipment, so when we get something as incredible as this, I'm going to make sure the world knows about it. Mo has provided the new benchmark for aircraft equipment fidelity with this mod. Included are his own handmade and textured fighter pilot helmets, flight suits, and G-suits. Multiple variations of each are included, so you're not stuck to just one type. The HGU-55 helmet is the primary one used, with the MBU-12 and MBU-20 mask variants available, as well as multiple tints of visors to suit your desired look. The more recent joint helmet mounting queuing systems 1 and 2 are available and have absolutely blown me away with how good they look. The detail and texturing work done on this equipment is second to none and is by far the most realistic aircrew flight equipment available to date. If you're wanting to look as good as you fly, then you absolutely need to have Moe's Pilot Gear Suite. At number 2 is Bed IR by Vestar. 
Yet another amazing mod I've showcased previously, this mod will absolutely change the way your night operations go. By using Shift In, your Helmet IR Illuminator will activate throwing out infrared lighting to enhance your night vision's effectiveness and massively increase your level of situational awareness during clandestine operations. Alternatively, Shift Alt In will activate the IR Illuminator on your weapon should you have the attachment added to your rifle. This helps while aiming at night to ensure you're not about to kill a friendly or civilian target and allows for quick target acquisition and identification. This mod has been one of the most popular on the workshop since it launched, and rightly so. Anyone running ground ops and enjoys nighttime operations for their immersion and tactical feel should be grabbing this mod. And finally, at number one is the FA-18EF Super Hornet by TTT3, Acolyte, Yaks, and Leshrac. This mod keeps getting better and better, having recently gone through a massive update that adds built-in BVR and ACM capabilities, as well as the capability to add, change, and remove waypoints using the Ace Micro Dagger, and finally, HOTAS control integration for quick access to critical systems and controls. Arma 3's flight model can't exactly hold a torch to DCS's level of realism, but these guys are providing you with a mod that will get you closer to that level of immersion for fighters than anything else available in the workshop. To top it all off, as complex as their systems are, they've created an awesome step-by-step -step wiki page for the Super Hornet explaining in layman's terms how exactly to use each weapon system so you're not clicking and guessing for hours. Getting it down is so much fun, and every second in the air flying with a buddy feels earned because you did more than just hit three buttons to get the thing airborne. Now if someone could just make me an F-16 with this level of immersion, I'd literally love you till the day I die. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so much for joining me on my first Arma 3 project in 2021. I hope you enjoyed my list, and as always, please share your thoughts and stories down in the comments section. I love reading about how you guys love Arma 3, because there are so many of us that get away from the craziness of reality to enjoy our time together or alone in this incredible game. I'd like to give a massive shout out, as always, to my amazing patrons for their continued loyal support and for making it possible for me to continue making content. I'd also like to thank you for watching liking, subscribing, and sharing your thoughts on mods, vehicles, weapons, and anything and everything Arma 3. I will see you all in the next video.